Welcome back to Only Talk Sports. We talk sports every single day, or at least we try to. I'm your host, Jeffrey. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Now, on Tuesday night in the Big Ten, there's a battle between the Iowa Hawkeyes traveling to Assembly Hall to take on the Indiana Hoosers. Who do I think is going to win this basketball game? Let's break it down. Now, the Iowa Hawkeyes, they're 18-11 and 11 and 10-8 and 8 in the Big Ten this season. And Fran McCaffrey, he's done a really solid job this season with the Hawkeyes. Yes, he did have the return of Keegan Murray's twin brother Chris Murray on the team but still he's had to piece together the rest of the roster to still get a really good team and he has done that this season getting good contributions from the rest of the players on the roster and overall Iowa should make the tournament they probably need another win or two to feel safe but overall they have a really solid resume this season and they have wins over Seton Hall and they beat their rivals the Iowa State Cyclones in the non-conference those were both really good wins but they also lost to TCU and Duke those were tough losses but in conference play they have great wins over Indiana at home, Northwestern at home, and they beat Michigan State in overtime at home in their last game, which was insane. They were down by 13 with a buck 30 to go in the game, and they ended up winning. So Iowa at home is a fantastic team. They can hit you with a barrage of threes to be able to pull out wins, but unfortunately Iowa has been a bad road team. They have not played well on the road, and their three-point shooting percentage definitely drops when they're on the road, but at home, Iowa is one of the toughest teams to beat in the country, and that's probably what's going to propel them to the NCAA tournament. And Iowa has gotten great offensive contributions all season from a bunch of players, including aforementioned Chris Murray, the twin brother of Keegan Murray, who's been lighting it up this season, averaging 20.2 points per game and 8 rebounds per game. He's going to be a first-round draft pick this year. He probably won't be drafted as high as his brother, but still he's been great all year he's a great three-point shooter and he does pretty well off the bounce he is a year older than his brother was coming out of the draft obviously that's probably why he's going to be a little bit lower and overall I think there's some things that Keegan Murray does a little bit better than Chris but Chris Murray's still a great player and he's definitely led the Hawkeyes to have the season that they've had so far Philip Robracha he's improved so much for the Hawkeyes this year he's averaging 13.9 points per game 7.6 rebounds per game there's so many great centers in the Big Ten this season that he gets a little bit forgotten about when talking about some of the best centers in the league, but he has definitely improved this season. He's gotten much better on the offensive end. His defense is solid. It does need a little bit more work, but he's gotten much better on that end of the ball as well. Tony Perkins is averaging 12.2 points per game and 3.8 rebounds per game. Tony Perkins' emergence for Iowa has been huge because last season he split time with Joe Toussaint at the point guard position, but Joe Toussaint transferred to West Virginia, and Tony Perkins has had to take over the league guard opportunities for Iowa, and he's been great all year for the Hawkeyes, and he's definitely improved the Iowa Hawkeyes' offense by setting up his teammates and he's been a really solid three-point shooter himself. Peyton Sanford's averaged 10 points per game and four rebounds per game. He's another player that stepped up from last year. He was a bench player for the Hawkeyes last season but this year he's taken a massive step forward. He's playing really well and Patrick McCaffrey, one of Fran McCaffrey's sons, is averaging 9.9 points per game and 3.7 rebounds per game. He's had a solid season. He had to take a step back from basketball for anxiety reasons but since his return he's definitely helped boost the Iowa offense and Iowa has Connor McCaffrey and Aaron Eulis that are also really solid players for the Hawkeyes. And this season, Iowa's averaging 80.4 points per game on offense, and on defense, they're giving up 74.4 points per game. Iowa's still a great offensive team, and over Fran McCaffrey's entire tenure as the Hawkeyes head coach, they've had great offenses, but Iowa's defense is their Achilles heel. They're still not a great defensive team, especially on the road, and they even have struggled at home to defend, but Iowa gets away with it because they're able to score a lot of points at home. But when they're on the road, their offense sometimes falls asleep. And they're not able to hit you with all those threes. But overall, Iowa is a really solid team. But they're going to have to be a better defensive team at the end of the season if they want to do special things in March Madness. Now, on the Indiana side, they're 20 and 9. They're 11 and 7 in the Big Ten this season. And Mike Woodson, in his second year as the Hoosiers head coach, has definitely improved the Indiana basketball program. They're much better now than what they were before Mike Woodson took over. And Trace Jackson Davis, his improvement has been so fun to watch for Indiana. And overall, they're just having a great season. And Indiana's slowly but steadily rising back up to the program that the Hoosier fans want Indiana to be. In Indiana this season, they have a great resume. It's one of the best in college basketball. And they have wins over Xavier, and they have wins over North Carolina in the non-conference. They did lose to Kansas and Arizona. Those were two tough losses. But in conference play, Indiana sweet their rivals Purdue for the first time since 2012-2013. And Indiana also has wins over Michigan State and Wisconsin, and they sweep Illinois. And overall, Indiana's playing really well, and they just had a great season overall, doing a really good job in Big Ten play. And Trace Jackson Davis is the biggest reason why. He's averaging 20.1 points 
per game, 11 rebounds, 3.8 assists, and 2.8 blocks. Hoosier fans are really going to miss Trace Jackson Davis after this season, now that he's announced that he's declaring for the draft after this season. But Trace Jackson Davis, he's been one of the best Hoosers of all time in points, rebounds, and blocks in almost every statistical category. But Indiana is going to need some wins this March Madness if a lot of Hoosier fans are going to say Trace Jackson Davis is one of the all-time great Hoosers. But for this season, he's been almost unstoppable in college basketball. And even Zach Eady, he's put up a tough fight against him as well. And Trace Jackson Davis has improved on blocking and rebounding the ball and passing the ball. And overall, he does look like a player that's ready for the NBA, even though he doesn't have a jump shot. But he's made Indiana such a great team this year. And Jalen Huchafino is a great one-two punch to go along with Jackson Davis. He's averaging 13.6 points per game, 4.1 rebounds per game, and 3.9 assists per game. He put up 35 points in Indiana's last game at Purdue. And overall, he's looking more and more like he's ready for the NBA. He's a fantastic guard with great size that can pass and shoot the ball at a high level. And overall, he's just a really great player for Indiana that's had to step up with the absence of Xavier Johnson, who could be back really soon, but there's been no announcement made of that just yet. Miller Cops averaging 8.1 points per game and 2.4 rebounds per game. Miller Cops played his role much better this year than he did last year after he transferred from Northwestern. He's shooting threes at a much higher rate than he was last year. And overall, he's playing with a lot of heart and hustle, and he's helped out Indiana in a lot of ways this year. Race Thompson's averaging 7.8 points per game and 5 rebounds per game. He's having a solid season. A knee injury that he suffered in the first game against Iowa has really set him back, but overall, he's been playing solid basketball, and he is a big reason why Indiana has had success this year. And Trey Galloway's averaging 7.3 points per game, 3 rebounds per game, and 2 assists per game. He's a Swiss Army knife guard for Indiana. He does so many things for the Hoosers. He's shooting the ball much better. He's a great passer, and he's also gotten much better at rebounding the ball from the guard position. And overall, he just plays with a lot of fight, and he's one of the toughest players in college basketball. And he's definitely a player Hoosier fans are glad to have on their team. And Indiana also has really solid players in Tamar Bates, Malik Renew, and Jordan Geronimo. And overall, Indiana's roster is really deep and talented, and that's what's helped them have a lot of success this year. And Indiana is averaging 75.5 points per game, and on defense, they're giving up 67.6 points per game. Indiana's offense is nowhere near as good as Iowa's because Iowa's capable of hitting 10 to 15 threes a game. Indiana doesn't hit as many threes as Iowa, but they are shooting at a really good rate from three-point land. And overall, Indiana's defense is much better than Iowa's, and that's what the Indiana is going to have to be able to bring on their own floor if they're going to want to be able to slow down Iowa, who has a fantastic offense. So who do I think is going to win this Big Ten battle? Overall, Iowa is a team that gives Indiana fits because of the fact their offense is so hit or miss. And when they play Indiana, Iowa's offense has been really good lately. They've won the last three games against Indiana, and they're the only team that Mike Woodson has not beaten in the Big Ten since taking over as head coach of the Indiana Hoosers. And overall, Chris Murray is a problem for Indiana because he's a guy that Indiana players cannot guard. He's just so talented, and he's going to be in the NBA. I mean, you really can't stop the guy. If they couldn't stop Keegan Murray before last year, then they're not going to be able to stop Chris Murray. And even Chris Murray had 29 points against Indiana last year in a game. So overall, Chris Murray is going to get his points, and Indiana is not going to be able to slow him down. Fran McCaffrey's coaching style is an issue for Indiana as well because he's always coaching so hard when I was playing against the Hoosers. He gets so mad and angry, and he's always getting his players ready to, to play against Indiana. And overall, Fran McCaffrey, he's a coach that cares so hard about his team, and he wants his team to win games. And I think that the improvement of the other players on the Iowa Hawkeyes team, like Philip Robrach and Tony Perkins and Peyton Sanford is a big reason why I was having a really good year but it's about being consistent on offense and improving on defense if I was going to be able to get wins on the road where they have struggled this season and for Indiana you're coming off an emotional win at Purdue and for Mike Woodson you're going to have to get your players to not have a letdown game after sweeping your arch rivals but it's at Assembly Hall you're going to have the home crowd on your side and Iowa has really struggled on the road this year and while Indiana does not have a player to stop Chris Murray Iowa does not have a player to stop Trace Jackson Davis he put up 30 points in their first game this season against Iowa. Philip Robracha, he's gotten much better on defense, but he's still not capable of stopping Trace Jackson Davis. And overall, if you look at Indiana's roster, it's just deeper than Iowa's. And I think that being at home with the crowd on their side, I think Indiana's role players like Miller Cop and Race Thompson and Trey Galloway are going to play really hard in this game. Along with Jalen Huchafino, who's improved so much in the last few games, I'm going to go with Indiana to beat Iowa 80-75 to in this Big Ten battle. I think Iowa can win this game. If Iowa's able to make 15 threes in this game, then they're capable of beating almost anybody in the country. But they haven't proven 
proven to be able to do that on the road much this year. I do think that their offensive style is going to be able to give Indiana's defense fits, and I do think they'll be able to keep up with the Hoosers. And overall, Fran McCaffrey, he's a really tough coach that always has his team ready for the Hoosers. And I think that Iowa's defense, even though it does struggle, will be able to slow down Indiana's offense a little bit, but probably won't be enough to get the win. And I think that Chris Murray's going to get whatever he wants against Indiana, and I think he's going to be able to put up a lot of points in this game because I don't think anybody on Indiana's roster is going to be able to slow him down. But again, Trace Jackson Davis is going to have a great game as well. I was not going to be able to really slow him down either. And I think that Indiana's role players will play really well in this game, especially because it's at home. And Indiana still has a shot to win the Big Ten regular season title if Purdue drops their last two games. Indiana has a lot to play for, plus with seeding for the NCAA tournament. And even though Iowa really needs this game to be able to secure an NCAA tournament bid, their situation is not that dire yet. And I think that Indiana is going to play really hard in this game because they have a lot more to play for right now. So I'm going to go with the Indiana Hoosers to beat the Iowa Hawkeyes 80-75 to in this Big Ten battle. Subscribe to the channel if you like sports content. Like this video down below. Comment down below whether you think Indiana or Iowa is going to win this basketball game and why. And I will see you next time.